Hey y'all, we're, uh, we're all back here now. Uh, the work's finally cooled down to room temperature. But first of all, I'm going to tell you what. The freezer was a bad idea. It ain't cool or the shit. I mean, hell, I got so frustrated. I went and told my wife, hey honey, this work's taking forever to cool. I'm going hunting. And hell, I went hunting. I was up there 20 foot in the tree. Uh, sitting there right before dark. So all kinds of deer, just nothing in bow range. But as I was driving out, saw about 10 deer right in the field. Hell, I was driving along, I see these two hot ass does, twins. Oh yeah. So I pulled up and I was like, hey girls, y'all need a ride? And they just look at me like I'm crazy. And they done run off. I mean, hell, my life story, right? Uh, well, I don't know, rejection hurts sometimes, and they really hurt, because hell, two hot-ass doe twins? <whistles> but anyway, back to this freezer. Man, using a freezer, that's about as worthless as trying to breed a mule with a cockapoo. One, it won't work, trust me. I tried it before. Two, I don't know who in the right mind would even try that. Well, hell, I did once. And three, those mules are sterile. They can't have little baby mules. I mean, you know they want to, but they don't, because uh, as soon as they're born, they get the uh, vasectomies. Because hell, uh, I don't know if you remember the crop disaster, uh, 1942. Someone didn't get them uh, the vasectomy. And hell, those bastards breed like rabbits. I wonder if they were tearing up all the crops and corn, attacking livestock, so they're, they're from then on, they're like, it's state law, you gotta get them vasectomies. Without further ado, uh, I'll show you what, what I got over here. Uh, I'll try to speak loud so you can hear me. Uh, what we got here, that's a work cool down. Ooh, it smells delicious. And I got this tube that runs down to the car we got. And what basically we're going to do is just gonna run it on down there. And it, let me tell you one thing. One thing. You got to sanitize everything. If you don't sanitize it, hell, I, I feel sorry for you. But you ain't going to get no good beer. I'm going to tell you that. Well, I did sanitize all this. It may not look like it. It's pretty old equipment. But uh, without further ado, oh, and we've got the yeast. I grew, uh, grew some yeast in my closet. Boy, Daddy, when we're done. So here we go. Just let it fill right up. Now let's just go run that tube down to the bottom so we don't get all foamed up. It won't take long. All right, we got all filled up. I'll show you what we got going on here. <clears throat> right there, that that's what's left over right there. I don't know if you can see it too well. It's all the crud and stuff left over from growing. You don't want that in there. I mean, as little as possible. It ain't gonna taste good. I guarantee you that too. So we got our food up. So basically now we're just gonna add our yeast. Get that out of the way, let it drain out. Got my mason jar. Excuse the camera stuff. My camera guy. Uh, he ain't working tonight, I guess. That's what he told me. What I do is I just shake it up real nice and just pour it in there. Nice and easy. You don't want you want it all going there. Try to get it all. Even that little slug. That's the yeast. There it goes. Just tip it until it goes in there. All 
All right, once you do that, make sure your hands are clean and washed up. What I do works for me. After I get that in there, I'll just give it a few good shakes. It's gonna get that yeast in there and get it some oxygen to get going and ferment quite well. Just do it a little bit. Get it nice and shook up. And then last but not least, all right here is an airlock. See how I fill it up with a little bit of water there? Just make sure it's sanitized though. You take that, you put it on top right there. And then uh, you put it in your closet somewhere where it's dark and cool. I try to keep it 68, 65. It depends on the yeast. You just got to watch the instructions. But uh, the purpose of this is it'll allow CO2 to escape, but it won't let no outside air get in with some funny bacteria. And what's going to happen here is that yeast, oh man, it's going to go crazy. It's going to eat up all those fermentable sugars. It's going to poop out carbon dioxide and pee out alcohol. And then uh, we'll, we'll get back to it when it's done fermenting. I usually leave it in there for about a week. Then I'll transfer it over, but that, that's that's a whole new video. But, but well, if you like what you see, you enjoy watching this, got any suggestions, comments, please comment, like, subscribe, share. Hell, I like doing this, so let me know what you want to say. Have a good one, y'all. Beer time.